Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to A Random Moment with Pastor David, Unfiltered. And, and uh, Pastor, before we get into our topic for today, I just want to ask our church family to keep you and Marie in prayer as you guys are going to Rosarito tomorrow. Yes, we are. And ministering at a uh, pastor's conference. A Mexican there. pastor's conference. Yes, and, uh, and so we ask the church family to pray for travel and mercies, and it'll just be a day trip, correct? Yes, we'll go in the morning, and we'll be, God willing, returning in the... Uh, in the uh, early afternoon if they if they allow us to come back <laughs> you never know well i mean a day of tacos won't be that bad i don't think i don't think it would be, be bad at all actually. uh church family if you would please keep them in prayer as they head down tomorrow morning and and spend time with some of the pastors that are in mexico and and it's amazing that you get to share a message to the pastors that are down there. i love doing that yeah i, I remember the last time we went down there i had the privilege of going with you and i remember when you were introduced. Uh, you were introduced in Spanish as a hijo de Mexico, which is an honor. It is. And to have the pastors down there that are that see you as a son of Mexico to yes. to go down there, and so uh, it's going to be a great time. For me, it's a very special time because you know, as Paul said, that he had a special love and burden for his people according to the flesh, for his Jewish brethren. You know, Jewish, uh, Jewish, the Jewish people. Even so. I have a uh, uh, a love a love for my uh, my Mexican brothers, and so yeah, it's just uh, a real joy. It's a blessing to be able to go and share with them. And I remember the last time we went, the the response that uh, the brothers down there had. They're very sweet. Yes, yes, and uh, and that's something I wish everybody could see that uh, the way that their response to to you and but to the word of god amen uh, the hunger for the word of god pastor last time we met we we spoke about crusade evangelist and you know, i've been thinking about the crusades the the various ones not specific any specific ones but the various ones where where there can be a, a tendency for it to become a tradition within the church it could be a tradition to attend it can be a tradition to to go and and to, of course want to invite friends and family what are your thoughts about that pastor when different crusades yet evangelical and in a, getting people to come and receive the gospel but have become a tradition in a sense? i think that's unfortunate at the beginning of uh, the crusade type ministries it was with the intent of uh, preaching the gospel and evangelizing and inviting people to come to a uh, relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and that's what a, 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 a crusade, I would assume, that's what a crusade is intended to do. You know, here in our fellowship, we do evangelistic outreaches. You know, we'll, we'll have some worshipful music and uh, give a, a message and give an invitation. And we see people get saved. Here in our fellowship, I give invitations every time i teach sometimes i invite them to come forward most of the time i'll ask them to raise their hand there in the uh, pew or in the chair and uh, i believe that that's part of what god has called me to do is to share the gospel and encourage people to uh to conversion and so that's all good and so when you have uh major crusades which uh, there are there are numbers throughout the world you know especially we know there are those uh, crusades here in the United States that are fairly well known. Uh, they're intended to um, reach the um, the one who doesn't have a relationship with Christ, and all of that is good. And again, you know, we spoke about this recently. And my heart for those things is that the uh, word of God is going forth, and it's my hope that people are actually converting to faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, I think, unfortunately, over the years, that they can become, in some people's minds, at least a, a traditional thing, where we go every year to the quote-unquote crusade, when, in, in, in fact, they ceased a long time ago uh, inviting any unsaved friends or family. Perhaps they did at first. Maybe they still do. I don't know. But I, I would say there's a number of people today who go to it as a free concert. Uh, they're hearing some, in, in some cases, they're hearing some of the more better known uh, Christian uh, uh, groups, music groups that are in the United States. And 
they're not being charged for this. If they were to go to a, one of the concerts that these groups or individuals would put on, they'd be spending some money for a ticket. But here they don't have to. And they just show up and they bring their friends or bring their families, you know, they enjoy a free concert and then share when people go on on the field at the invitation. I, I personally think that that is not exactly what the evangelists would intend. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, those who do evangelism would, uh, would prefer speaking to um, people who are bringing unsaved friends and unsaved people. That's who they'd like to reach. That's what the whole purpose is. And so over the years, uh, I've heard more than once people saying, well, are you going to the Crusades? Going to have great music. And they're not speaking to unbelievers. They're posting it on uh, social media. You know, we're going to such and so crusade and there'll be great music. We're bringing our family. It's become a tradition. I'm pretty sure the evangelist doesn't want to be putting on free concerts. I'm pretty sure the evangelist wants to reach the unsaved because the message that's being given is not necessarily a bible study per se where you're building up the uh, the believer in their faith you're it's it's focusing on reaching the unbeliever and so as a believer i have i have no particular reason to attend an evangelistic crusade and as a believer, I would like to believe that I've been equipped by the Lord to be able to proclaim the gospel in such a way as to encourage someone to have faith in Christ. So I, I have never really been the Christian who feels, well, I should take him to hear this person because of his gifting or whatever. I just have never had that inclination. And so uh, I'm not a crusade attendee. I, I have no need to be in the crusades. And in this church, I preach the gospel and encourage people to receive salvation. And so I would like to believe I'm doing the work of an evangelist every time I open the book. And so when people are posting on Facebook or, you know, Twitter or whatever, you know, going to the, on the crusade or whatever, I... I I, will, I would only hope that they're bringing unsaved friends because that's what the quote-unquote crusade is supposed to be geared towards. And so, you know, I have read, John, like you, I have read people say it's become a tradition. What, for you to go to a free concert, to bring your family to an evening a church service and then not to go to church the next day because you think you already went to church? I mean, I'm not necessarily uh, a fan of that. And I like what you said when we open, when you share the message every Sunday, you're preaching the gospel. And, uh, and thank you, Pastor. You know, I was thinking about that and I wanted to get your feedback on that because at one time too, it was a tradition for me and to get together with other friends and, and we'd go down and hear a great concert. And again, it's, it's a good thing when it's, re when it's reaching the lost. Sure. But when it's become, for me at least, uh, I can come hear that at church, you know, and it's not a substitute. And so... I wanted your feedback on that, Pastor, because I was thinking about that as, as since we had done our last uh, unfiltered. So thank you for giving us some insight, or at least answering the question uh, that we had, that I had, and and want to invite you guys to come out. Speaking of an evangelistic message, come out on uh, Sunday morning, eight thirty and ten forty-five. Yeah. As we're going, you're going to teach in the Book of Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, what chapter are you in, Pastor? Chapter four. Chapter four. I'm going through the parables found in chapter four and. We'll be looking at two or three of them this upcoming Sunday, you know. And part of part of the um, the study I'll be doing, John, is related to the purpose of the church. I mean, what is the church supposed to be doing? You know, we're going to be the the light that isn't hidden under a basket, right? What's that talking about? You know, it's it's about being an evangelistic, proclaiming group of people. See, what we should be doing is we should be aware of the fact that the church is not made up of only one body part. You know, not everyone, Paul said, is an eye. Not everyone is an ear. You know, we all have different gifts and different uh, abilities, and we're supposed to be exercising those. And so that's why I don't emphasize the, the one part of the body, uh, body over the others. We're not supposed to do that. You know, you're supposed to 
just see the body working in concert. And again, you know, I think that one of the dangers is, is that we can overemphasize the importance of one over the other. You know, so one person may have a mouth, we'll say he speaks, but the other person may have an ear, they listen. And we need both the mouth and the ear in order for the body to function properly. And I so that, yes. I, I just I just think that if, if people are going to to special events and crusades, to be very careful, not you know, not to make the special event or even that wonderful event called the crusade, um, not to make that the premier thing. I mean you can still invite friends to your own church. You can invite friends to your house. You can invite friends to your Bible study. You can invite friends to know Christ just by speaking yourself. I, I don't want to rely on one person or one gift in the body of Christ when every member is to do its work, every member. And so uh, that's that's that would be my response. Once again, returning to that, I just really I really feel that we can overemphasize certain parts of the body of Christ to the neglecting of other parts. We need to be careful. Amen, Pastor. Thank you for that. Uh, I also want to remind the church that on Sunday, October 24th, after second service, we have a couple of events going on. We have our Israel information meeting and uh, newly advertised, we're going to be serving a uh, some Mexican a food, meal. a good great. meal that a church is able to purchase. We'll have some more information on that. That'll be after first and second service on October 24th. And I think the church will like that. I do. Uh, I think, and, I uh, think so. I do. <laughs> really, it was good. Yeah. <laughs> so church family, come on out on uh, Sunday morning, 8, 30, 10, 45. And Pastor David, thank you so much. Of course. God bless you, church family. We'll see you soon.